Welcome to the Mad Max Minute. We hope you're ready to rumble because this is Mad Max Fury Road, one minute at a time. I'm Rick. And I'm Julia. And today we're talking about Minute 36, which begins with the dag reluctantly approaching Max with the bolt cutters. And it ends with Max getting dragged around by his chain. Wrapping up the week with us is our panel of experts on Furious Vexations, Liz, Caitlin, and Karen. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm Caitlin. I'm Liz! There you go! I like that we waited until the third day to actually introduce ourselves. I know. That's not true. That's why I started laughing. That's not true. We did the last episode. I, this is yeah. the first time I've introduced myself, I no, think, this entire week. Did, no, no. No? No. Because well, then I like I, that we waited till the second time to do it, it, and then we waited till the third one to do it first. Well, I was trying to follow We're you guys, winning but... at life is why really were what you this comes down to. Why would you follow us? Because That's... I'm always and Liz. It's true. Well, I'm definitely not doing anybody any favors because I've mixed up the order of you all every day this week. intentional. I wanted everybody to get a chance to be first at least once this week. I appreciate that. That's fine. That's why we don't have guests in groups of four because then someone would be left out. So we start off this minute with Max pointing his shotgun at the dag and growling out the word you. And so the dag proceeds to slowly walk away from Cheeto and towards Max. I am going to talk a little bit more about the actress who plays the dag in a moment, but very similar to Rosie Huntington Wheatley, she is a runway model and she has Shocker. and she has been paid at least once round about $100,000 to walk in a fashion show. And let's all just watch this walk that she's doing. And I'm sure this is not the $100,000 walk. No, this she, is barely even a convincing not. human walk. Never mind no. the cat walk, walk. I do like it, though, because it's very walking dead. Like, it's less I of a walk and more of a thing. shamble. Very zombie-like. Yeah. It's not quite. I mean, a runway walk is, like, over crossed legs and whatnot. She's somewhere between a natural walk and that, but I think, zombie walk I think she accurate. definitely looks like she's looking for brains. <laughs> $100,000 to do a walk on a cat walk? Yep. Damn, I'm going to have to look this walk up. Not yes. per pass, obviously, for like no, the no. entire show. No, but still. <laughs> all you got to do is walk down the look like Ursula Andress does in that little bedsheet number she's wearing. No, I think it even goes beyond that in that I cannot walk on a raised platform without <laughs> tripping. So I'm just impressed that she does it in any manner of clothing and then does it so well that people will pay her an exorbitant amount of money to do, do so. Do you often do it naked? Is that why you trip? What are you suggesting? No, I wasn't. No. <laughs> well, I wasn't suggesting that, but now that you mention it. Are you, are you uh, think I'm tripping over bits of my own anatomy over here? your breasts. Yeah, that's yes. what I was trying to suggest. <laughs> I have actually like a really deathly fear that if I were ever to get married, I would definitely fall down the aisle. So. Oh, I was in a wedding and I didn't want to wear my glasses. I am. The listeners probably don't know this. I am ridiculously nearsighted. Oh, I but... thought you were going to say old. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it for the record. <laughs> and I was in a wedding, and I walked myself down the aisle towards the altar. And I don't wear my glasses to formal events because, honestly, at this particular wedding, I looked an awful lot like Sarah Palin. So I didn't want to wear my glasses. <laughs> What's really important about this walk is that the dag is super spacey about it. Like, she's doing that weird zombie shamble over to Max, and she has got a 1,000-yard stare. She is looking right past Max, and we're paused at around the 17-second mark, and you can see that her focus is going right past Max's face, right across the chain, and in the distance, they're very faint, a shadowy blob that is very obviously Immortan Joe's war party. Oh yeah, that's the doof wagon. Doof wagon. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. So as the dag gets closer to Ang Herod, we hear this voice, and it's supposed to be the dag. It starts off as we're looking at the blob in the distance, and then it continues as we cut back to the dag, but she says, Ang Herod, is that just the wind, or is it a furious vexation? And it's weird, because when we cut back to the dag, her mouth is not moving. It's one of those situations where the ADR is just really clumsy. I hate or to say that, but it's how it is. They're telepathic. I mean, you might be able to say that without moving your lips too, too much. I mean, I know in reality it is probably just ADR, like, hey, you know what would be really cool is if we added that line there? Yeah. Right. But I mean... I mean, it is a whisper. I do kind of wonder, like, if we could headcanon in or, like, forcibly fan-wank in the idea that the wives are used to... 
Not ventriloquist, but they're <laughs> used to they're used to having conversations without surreptitious. Yeah. Oh, and I just noticed that she does in fact have a tattoo on her between her shoulder blades. Oh yeah. I oh, was yes, curious as to whether or not property. Yeah, everybody gets branded. So much fun. Mm-hmm. That that's such a <sighs> Does anybody here know off the top of their head what she means by a furious vexation? You, no. Or are you just taking a poll? <laughs> I, mean, I wanted I wanted I wanted to, you know, query the room before give, I give the audience a so chance. So a vexation. Wait, are they on the they're on are they officially on the Fury Road yet? Like the the road that was supposed to be home. We're definitely on the Fury Road at is this it, point. Is it like a hallucination that, that Eric, why don't you go before I make make a fool of myself? Yeah, so ahead. a vexation is just an annoyance. Like when someone says, Oh, such and such a thing is vexing me greatly oh, yeah. and then they fall back onto their fainting couch. As you do. And so <laughs> Basically, the dag is saying, Ang Herod, is that just the wind or is that just something that's really angry and really annoying? Which is just her fancy way of saying that old man that rapes us all the time. Which is. Oh, tr- so hmm. like they call him a furious vexation. Yeah. Because he's always mad. Interesting. And he's very annoying. I think it's disturbing to think that they have a charming turn of phrase to refer to their rapist. Yeah, I agree with well, that. Uh, there's a lot in this situation that's very bothersome. Yes, there is. Yeah. But it would also be a good way to talk about old man rapey without actually saying his name. Yeah. Which yes. talking smack about him probably has uh, bad consequences. Like scars on your face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But giving him a nickname also like lets him reclaim a little bit of control in your life. Well, considering that he refers to Ang, Ang, oh God. Ang Herod. Thank you. Oh, it's spreading. I know. That, well, he refers to her as Precious. Splendid. No. Splendid. Splendid. Why do I keep thinking her name is Precious? Because it's the dog from Silence of the Lambs. And the novel, based on a novel pushed by Zephyr. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because she is precious to me, and he's referring, or it is precious to me. Maybe it's because he's and later on in the movie he's referring to the baby. But he goes out of his way to give everybody else names. So maybe this is their turnabout. Yeah. So the dag, because this is the first time we've heard her speak... Maybe she's just angry because her name is The Dag. <laughs> like as in the Dagwood sandwich? It's Australian slang. For? Pretty much a dingleberry on a sheep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so poetic, yeah. the way you put it. So anyway, The Dag is played by model Abby Lee Kershaw. She is best known, according to IMDb, for her role in this movie. She also appeared in 2016's The Neon Demon, where she played Sarah. She was also in 2017's The Dark Tower, where she played Tirana. And she was in 2016's Gods of Egypt as Anat. Oh, dear. Which I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I didn't actually see the Gods of Egypt movie. I wouldn't worry about (laughs) being accurate in any way with that movie. (laughs) Because they certainly weren't. mm. What do you mean? A full white cast makes total sense for a film that's taking place in Egypt, Liz. I don't understand what your problem is. Obviously, a Scotsman would play a god of Egypt. Oh, God, Uh, that's right. Was Gerard Butler in that? Yes, he was. Uh, Why is Gerard Butler always in such crappy movies? (laughs) Let's see, let's not whip up a geostorm about this. Okay, a Gerard Butler movie that's not crappy is called Dear Frankie, and it's adorable. <laughs> he has one where he plays a not a video game character. The gamer. Yeah, that was a I like no. Do we know I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Anyway, looked, anyway but could Abby you think Lee of Kershaw. Anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was born June twelfth, nineteen eighty seven in Melbourne, Victoria. She said in an interview that as a child she was always in the hospital. For instance, at age four, she suffered from meningitis and had to have two spinal taps. Ooh, Jesus, she also no. had a tumor on her knee Yeet. and several broken bones from climbing trees. So, you know, oh. kid stuff that oh, she part, was sporty but, you know, spice. Other things. She grew up in Kensington and attended St. Michael's Catholic Primary School in North Melbourne, then the Academy of Mary Immaculate in Fitzroy before going on to win the Australian 2004 Girlfriend Model Search. She likes long walks on the beach. Getting Poetry read rated. by candlelight. Yep. <laughs> and from the sound of it, it's probably real sick of Catholicism. So, af- <laughs> so after high school in 2005, she moved from Melbourne to Sydney to begin modeling. And while at the beach, she was scouted by Chic Management's Kathy Ward and soon signed on to that same agency. In 2007, she moved to New York City to continue her modeling career, which she would focus on for the next five years, becoming incredibly... In demand. In 2012, she went to Africa to act in Fury Road here, and since then, she has focused more on her acting than her modeling, but she still continues to appear 
in magazines and things like that. But she is actively seeking out more in front of the camera acting roles as opposed to just being a in runway In front of model. the camera walking roles. Yeah. <laughs> Walk on roles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'll be here all night. <laughs> Until Liz throws you out. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we get this little communication between the Dagonang Herod, but Max interrupts it by whipping the chain around and he gets everybody's <laughs> attention. Hey, focus up. And so the dag, she raises the bolt cutters and puts them around the chain and she starts struggling and trying to just really get those bolt cutters down. And Max <laughs> gets grimace. this look on his face. He's like, what the <laughs> heck is going on? I saw you doing the bolt cutters on the padlocks and you weren't having a problem. What the heck is going on? What's the consensus? Okay. I think the angle is wrong. I yes. think it is much easier when the bolt cutters are below your center of gravity because then you can kind of lean on it to open it. Now she, like if he were, say, on his knees... I think she would... You're just really trying to get I'm him on just, the ground. He's just pillow lips <laughs> on the ground. Yeah, but they're um, really chapped pillows right No, now. no, that's fine. It's no, fine. No, no. It was just... It'll be fine. In post-apocalyptic times, you take what you can get. Yeah. Look, look at him. He's so pretty. But yeah, I think were he shorter or were he down on the ground that she would not have this issue. I firmly believe that it's just an issue of leverage. <laughs> also... The chain itself is being suspended just by his arm, as opposed to the chastity belt, which is already like mostly like anchored in on a person. And the chastity belt doesn't have a blood tube going through it, making things all squishy and wiggly. Well, I don't think she's actually trying to go through the. From what I could tell, it's around the whole thing. Like, oh, to me, it looks like it's, it's just on caught. one outer piece of the link. Mm -hmm. And if it isn't on it one outer be. piece of the link, she's doing it wrong. I agree with Karen that her angle of attack, her leverage is all wrong. But I think she's also biding her time. She's mm. delaying. She's waiting yeah. for somebody to do something because these wives and Furiosa do seem to have a connection. Maybe it's something that they talked about beforehand that they'll always stick together. They'll always have each other's backs, that they can trust that, okay, the dag is in this position of danger with Angharad. They can count on the rest of the team to attack. So she's delaying waiting for that attack plus over in second 34 we get this shot of furiosa and she's looking very intently at max i think she's standing there looking for an opening and as the dag just bears down on that chain she's pulling max's head to the side and it distracts him enough that when we get to second 36 as the dag pulls down on the chain and moves off to the side Furiosa is there like a freight train, and she's about to hit him full force. Okay, this is going to be a really weird comment to make, and I apologize for the really weirdness of this comment. It's about his pillowy lips again, isn't it? No, no. Oh. It's about Charlize Theron and how I love that she can take a hit. And I know that that's an odd thing to say, but between this and Atomic Blonde, her physicality and her ability, like, we see it more now, but we haven't always gotten to see women take hits in movies for a mm. variety of reasons i'm not advocating domestic abuse i'm not saying that women should be hit which i realize is what i was afraid of of saying but she's got this physical i mean look at she barrels right into him where wait I, is it, it actually her it's not her she doesn't have a stunt double well, she's got a stunt no, double charlie's the theron did have a stunt double but she's still portraying the character i think with all with all things consent is important <laughs> yes yeah. yes because well i if, mean in a fight that's going to be difficult yeah but. Like no, two, no. But... Two actors participating in a fight. Yes. You know, yes. that's one thing. But yeah, Charlize there, and she definitely has the willingness to portray those types of characters. And she absolutely pulls off that she is the kind of person that can throw down like this. I mean, if you're watching at home and just stop at second 38, she has Max off the ground. Like, it's like that move they do in like your training in football with the the pads that you have to move downfield. It's amazing. And all right, you're right. It is probably, that may probably be both of their stunt doubles, but it's still amazing to watch a woman give a hit like that. Did, wasn't it in Fury Road that there were two stunt performers who yes, got, got married? married? Yeah, Actually, it's definitely one of hers, I it think. It was the stunt double for the Doof Warrior and Capable. Oh, oh, okay. Why did I think it was hers? Although it was Furiosa's stunt double and 
I don't know who the other stunt double was off the top of my head, but no, there there were multiple romances that came out of this movie so because you're true. spending all your time in the desert in Africa. Except for mm-hmm. between Charlize Theron and um, Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Oh yeah, they hated each other. <laughs> no love lost. They, Boy, really? They were method with not liking each other. Yeah, this fight that oh, they're dear. having right now, this is like legit. Oh no. They did yeah. not like each other. Wow. Yeah, didn't he write her some sort of like an apology letter after the fact? Oh yeah, they were yeah. they were both kind of douche canoes to each other. From yeah, I think by the, the end they kind of made peace. Yeah, but it, it took the making of an entire movie to get there. Wow, well, at least there was friendship in the end. <laughs> um, so what I like about this hit as well is that Ang Herod has gotten out of the way. She's taking cover over by the tanker. And the dag, almost immediately, as soon as that hit happens, is out of the way. They're working well with Furiosa. They know they don't want to get in her way, but they're also not moving too far away because they are definitely going to come back into this fight. Because after Max gets down on the ground... Oh, God, poor Nux. Yeah, quick side note. <laughs> Nux and the car door, because Max gets thrown so far, they do flop around. Whoop. And just the way that Furiosa pins Max's head to the ground... She pins one arm with her knee. She's got his face down with her hand. And then she quickly reaches over, gets the shotgun. And before you know it, that shotgun is in Max's chin. And I love the music in this scene because it's very drum heavy. And as soon as we get that shotgun up under his chin, oh God. <laughs> the drums stop. Oh, the look on his face. Yeah. His eyes widen like... What just happened? Yeah. Well, and she looks like a freaking... What? She looks like a Chucky doll while she's doing it, <laughs> yeah. too. It's... Jeez. <laughs> this is... <laughs> we were watching it. Liz and I were, were watching this together. And I don't remember at what point, but now it's all I can think of was uh, if you've read any of Fractions Run on Hawkeye. It's like, okay. <laughs> this looks This bad. looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, this moment was pretty hot. Like, oh, go oh, yeah. Charlize Theron just taking him down like that, like... She is so strong and commanding and just gets it done. And it was incredibly sexy. Oh, hell yeah. Agreed. I feel like this is a good moment, especially at second 44 here, where I just have to observe that between this and Dunkirk, Tom Hardy really shows off his eye acting ability. Like when his face is covered, he still is really good at conveying a lot of expression and emotion. This still (laughs) here at second 44 kind of reminds me of the beginning of Ragnarok. I almost expect Chris Hemsworth to pop in and be like, I bet you're wondering how I got here. Yes. Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Like this should have been the opening moments of the movie. (laughs) And then we flash back to how he got here. They start playing Baba O'Reilly. I wasn't always like this. (laughs) I used to be a cop. A road warrior. They <laughs> cut all the way back to 79. <laughs> so, by all means, Furiosa has Max dead to rights. And then she flicks that trigger and it clicks with nothing. Because that gun is unloaded. That's oh, that's Max's ammo. If he's going to threaten you, it's because his gun doesn't actually have ammo in it. <laughs> and I love the expression on Furiosa's face because she seems to like have these thoughts just run by in an instant. Like, are you friggin' kidding me? <laughs> This thing was empty the whole friggin' time. You have got to be kidding me. We've been had. <laughs> A clever ruse. Yeah, that, that expression is priceless. And her retaliation for being fooled <laughs> is to take that gun and just try and pistol whip him across the face. The problem is she only has one arm, and if she raises that arm to smack him, it opens Max up to retaliate. So he throws his hands up and stops her. Yeah, Max is no slouch either. Yeah, he's mad now. He's mad, Max? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's been mad for four movies. Well, is he going to take it anymore? Three and, and a half. quarter. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't actually get mad in that first one until the last quarter, so whatever. The whole struggle between them right now, it feels like a like a like you know a clash of titans. It really feels like these are two formidable warriors who know what they're doing. Really, like, you know, they've met their match. And something that occurs to me on a action movie level... This is a fight between a man and a woman. These are both attractive heroes as far as Hollywood conventions are concerned. 
and this is a very close quarters fight. Like they are on top of each other. They're rolling around. And at no point do I personally watch this and think, oh, I'm meant to find this sexy. Like aside I mean, from like, or like they're going to break away and kiss any yeah. second. Yeah. This, like, this, this, like, like Batman cat. At no point style. am I like, oh, is this supposed to be a will they won't they hot and cold romance? No, I'm not getting any of those vibes. Like, this, this is, is just, very hot, but it's not romantic. Like, this so, is yeah, not, sure. this is not a meat cute. This no. isn't Brad Pitt <laughs> and Angelina Jolie. No, like this is just a struggle to survive. That is a Mr. and Mrs. Smith reference. By yeah. Yes, no, no, I'm sorry. I got lost in thinking about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Otherwise, <laughs> and I would have made the comment, but... That must have been Mr. very difficult for you to watch. That was, that was, oh, that movie was terrible for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're the first two people to think about that movie in a long time. <laughs> Quite possibly. I, I don't yes. know. Brad and Angelina probably... I'm, I'm thinking maybe, maybe Jennifer Aniston. Wait a second. Are they divorced now? Yeah, they are, they're right? now. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm over. sure maybe Jennifer Aniston thought about it a lot. Oh, no. As she was carving <laughs> voodoo dolls. <laughs> Carve away, Jennifer. <laughs> Carve away. I really like the fact that in the previous scene before the gun got raised, we actually got a really good, solid look at the mask, like the muzzle that Max is wearing. It looks and like it's, it's made of a trowel. Or not a trowel, a... Uh, it looks like a, like a trident. He, well, I was yeah. thinking like a like, like a, a gardening. Exactly. He's yeah. just wearing a, piece a garden of gardening. Weasel. Yeah. What, what is the one I'm thinking of, though? What is that called? Look at that. Like a little gardening fork. A spade? Yeah. Sure. No, no, spades no. are like little shovel things. There's a word for that. Maybe it is just a little... What did you just call it? A gardening fork. Is that what sure. it... Sure. I don't know. Sure, that. why not? Yeah, sure. But I mean, it does look like the, the bit that extends down is circular. It looks like you could stick a pole in it. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. A, something you would use, like a, well, not like quite like a pitchfork, but... Actually, that might be. You know, it's it could be for like mark. breaking up weeds, yeah. or something like, like that, or, a, or um, yeah. derooting stuff, or something like that. I love like, how none of us are clearly gardeners. Like if a yeah. pitchfork <laughs> is a large tool, this is a size down tool. Maybe it's like an underhand toss fork. Is oh, it? A, is it? A, maybe it's a little baby pitchfork. <laughs> is it? A, no, no, no! I got it! I got it! Is it a pitch salad fork? I like it. Oh, that didn't what? get a reaction. I was hoping. What? I'm thinking that know. you know that's no salad forks are small dessert fork. Shrimp a forks? It's a salad, shrimp fork? A, a dessert fork and a what? salad fork are the same thing. Really? But a shrimp the fork is size. real okay. tiny. There will be two of them to say, on a full display, <laughs> but they're the same I size. I beg your pardon, I am not so un- I should say good day. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to point it out is look at how well fabricated this is. They only had Max for how long and they managed to make a muzzle that like, it hugs and caresses the beautifulness that is his cheekbones. <laughs> so you are saying that it was custom made for Max, not something they had in stock. Yes. Disagree. I would think that at some mm. point they had something like that because every once in a while someone's going to go feral in the wasteland. Yeah, I think they've got someone that just makes muzzles and they've got a pile of them. And so they just had Max tied down to a board and they had one of those rom-com trying on clothes montages <laughs> where they would just spin Max around and every time he spun around, he'd be wearing a different Your- muzzle. And the I hope- war boys are looking at it like... I don't like that what one. Kind of, I next. hope there's like some like really like poppy music in the background. Makeover, 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 makeover. See, now in my mind, it's like going to Ollivander's. Remember, the man doesn't choose the muzzle. The muzzle chooses the man. <laughs> this is gardening fork and brass rivets <laughs> and unicorn hair. <laughs> we were- Only one other feral wastelander wore this muzzle. <laughs> He <laughs> shall not be named. A Morton Joe. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, Furious vexation. <laughs> Furious vexation is such a weird thing to say. This movie is so weird. It's a very weird. odd turn of phrase. I just feel like that's one of those things where it's like, we're just being weird to be weird. That is from the much... Citadel. As opposed yeah, to the right, rest though. of the movie, which is an exercise in restraint. Yeah, besides no, that, that's pretty much the like dag's it's... MO. Like, the dag is like that. She's kind of weird, and she has these phrases that she keep, throws just out. Just keep in mind that I haven't seen this movie since it came out in theaters, <laughs> and I didn't even know that the women characters had names, except for Furiosa until now. So I didn't recall. <laughs> well, so, I mean, she's like if the you had Luna read the Love material Good. I sent you. Of Mad Max. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel kind of bad about that. I do. I feel bad. So there's something really cool about these next couple of shots we're starting at around second 49 and what max is going to do is he's going to push off against the ground and roll on top of furiosa and you oh. see that he takes a bunch of sand in his left hand and he throws it into furiosa's oh, I thought face that was her. and then we cut to splendid and capable they run over they grab max's chain and they start pulling and <laughs> when we cut back to max and furiosa the sand 
is still flying from that throw before. So what's happening here is not so much that everything is happening in exact sequence, because if we run back to the roll, you can see, if I can pause this correctly, that Splendid and Capable are already running to the chain. So instead of showing everything in a wide shot, we just get a bunch of these really quick close-ups to show that, yeah, everything is happening in tandem. Everything's happening at the same time. It's just we're taking these instances and focusing in on them instead of having everything be very wide out and impersonal. We're very in the thick of it, and I and really like that. Dag is still sitting there mumbling brains. <laughs> <laughs> So, obviously, Furiosa is not fond of having sand thrown in her face, and the only thing I can think of is King of the Hill with pocket sand. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) It's not the last time that Max is going to throw sand. If he was a Pokemon, one of his moves would be sand attack. It's not very effective. But it does lower accuracy. That's fair. (laughs) Can I, just really quickly, a thought that occurred to me, once again invoking classic Star History nerd, just seeing, like, Max in profile with that mask on makes me think of Gladiators, Mm. and I love it. Anyway, I, that's it. I keep looking at the studs on the tires. Now, I realize why they're there. I realize functionally why they are there. I do Definitely. not know a lot about Buddhism, but I have watched a lot of Avatar The Last Airbender, and all I can think <laughs> of is the raised lotus that they put Aang's statue on in the middle of Yue Bay. And I'm wondering <laughs> if... It's ridiculous, but I'm just thinking way over the top in a ridiculous left field sort of way that this truck is leading them to... A to form enlightenment. of enlightenment and salvation, and so I like that. I don't think it's out of line at all. This cult of the V8 and aspects of it that we have seen have pulled from many, many world religions. So the idea that they've pulled some imagery from Buddhism to inspire the spikes on the wheels is entirely plausible. I just keep looking past the dag and her legs. She has very long legs. I don't want to like leg shame. Well, she has very long legs. That's hundred thousand. Do- What's wrong with long legs? There's Karen? nothing wrong with long legs. I just Good. wanted to be like I'm looking past her legs. They go all the way up. And- <laughs> well, you know why? Because in this particular shot, she looks a little knock kneed, which I don't think she is. But it's just it's a very weird well, position she's, she's in. Well, she she's did have a tumor. Skinny. Yeah. She what? She had a tumor on her knee. When she was a kid. Oh, that's not what I mean. I just an mean arrow. She <laughs> took an arrow. Oh, to God. Knee. Now you're just making me sound like a whole huge jerk. That's not what I meant. I just Man, look at her freakish knees. <laughs> that's like... God, tumor knees. But that's what they call you, you freak. I would, I would say that she was attractive, but her knees are just a little too pointy for me. <laughs> hey, she will actually... $100,000 for one night's work, so I don't think any of us get to say no, anything. No, yeah. no. She does have very long legs, though. Well, most women proportionally have longer legs than their torsos, and with men it's the other way around. More torso than leg. My college roommate, then, I guess is an exception. I don't, well, I mean, most, I'm saying most of the time, but think about, she's in the minority. Think about a certain ex-romance. You're talking about my ex-boyfriend? Who was 70% torso. torso. It was a lot of, it was very confusing for people if they encountered (laughs) us sitting down first, because, (laughs) because I have a lot of legs. He's got a lot of torso. A lot of torso. He, he made me look very short sitting down. I'm five foot nine. He was five foot nine. I keep finding people like that. My college roommate also was like, she's five, five one and three quarters, but she says five two. Uh, and that's, we were the same listen, that's the prerogative of we three quarter <laughs> cuspers, okay? We round up. Because I if understand. you say, oh, I'm five, four and three quarters, <laughs> people think that you're like a moron. Like, no one cares about three quarters. I'm just I, saying, It was five and a half, really. I gave her the three quarters charitably once in the year. <laughs> and then she rounded up to the five two. And it was fine. It comes fine. out. You know, it's fine, because I recognize that uh, as a tall woman, like, there are certain privileges that society bestows upon me that way. You can reach the to top reach of shelves. Nevertheless, we were the same height when we were sitting down. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the grocery store, I always have to reach things for other people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Can you reach the pack of Jello on the top shelf? Okay, it's, you sure. know, it's it's something I, I don't mind doing. I like being helpful. Right. Because, you know... I'll be helpful. You know. I never say no. What are the things no, that... No, old lady, you can't have jelly. What are the things that we must suffer? Uh, we have trouble finding pants sometimes. Shoes. Oh. Shoes are impossible for me to find. Let's get a clean We have yet to talk one. about the Sorry, best what moment in this minute. Yes! Oh. The best. Tell oh, us, God. tell us. Rick? Oh, God, this freeze frame is so great at second 58. Yeah, so, this is hot. Capable and Ang Harrod I agree. have taken the Julia gets me. Have taken the initiative to grab Max's chain and just give it a pull. And they have drawn him back 
and he is splayed out, just bent back at the knees. And the only reason he hasn't fallen backwards yet is the fact that he's holding on to the shotgun, and so is Furiosa. And there reaches a point that Furiosa decides that it's better to just let go of the gun, which she does, and he flops backwards. Oh, but she uses that to pull herself up to her knees. And once she's up to her knees, she holds out her good hand, and there's the dag. Wait, wait, wait. Her good hand? You mean her hand? Yes. It's not good hand versus bad hand. It's hand versus no Arguably, hand. a missing hand is a bad hand. No, you're right. It's his hand. It's her hand. Yeah, it's it's her the hand. one she's got. Yes. Whatever the terminology is, the dag throws <laughs> the bolt cutters. Yeah, that and Furiosa turns to her and says, I only have one hand, you idiot! (laughs) (laughs) And and that's the end of the movie. (laughs) Smash credits directed by George Miller. (laughs) Start the music. Halfway through the credits, Nux gets up, guys. God, I wish that's what happened. Um, Guys, where'd you go, guys? What would have been amazing is if the movie ended, there's that shot of the car rolling and the flare drops down, and the darkness gathers in around it, and then it cuts to black. And it's like, what, two, three seconds of just black screen? Yes. If the credits had come up there, that would have been amazing. Because it's only like 27, 28 minutes into the movie. Max is dead. Because no one would survive that. The rig got away. Movie over. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that seems perfectly reasonable. (laughs) A natural stopping point. Instead, it's just the end of Act 1. Because you cannot kill Max. You can we, try. We yeah, tried. Dude, he's Mad Max. He's not Dead Max. It would be a way less interesting <laughs> protagonist. Uh, dead, yeah. dead Max is a different movie. <laughs> See, uh, the dag, what's her actress's name? Abby Lee Kershaw. So Abby Lee Kershaw thought she was acting in Dead Max, not Mad Max. Ah. Yes. Uh, yes. Max uh, Wouldn't the that dead. be Undead Max? <laughs> but I didn't even notice hmm? that the bolt cutter toss happened until we watched this like at a slower register and i i know that most action movies can't hold up or probably don't hold up to this level of like frame by frame scrutiny Mm. and still kind of hold it together but this one just like i i don't know i'm I'm just every time we've watched a scene in slow-mo and we've been watching the same minutes kind of repeatedly yeah i'm gonna dream this these these three minutes (laughs) from this week finding new stuff and that's just cool to me yeah it, yeah, that George Miller, he knows how to direct a movie, you know? Wait, what I else think, is he I think directed? They gave, I think they gave him a statue for this well, one. He directed Mad Max. Happy yes, Feet. Yes, clearly. Thank you. I said, what else? Uh, uh, Mad Max Beyond. Did you say what? Happy, Happy Feet. Feet. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yes. Uh, babe, Pig in the City. Yeah. What? He didn't Stop. direct the first Babe. He, the he produced one. the first Babe, but he didn't yeah. direct until the second one. Okay. This and is very what strange. What else has he done? I should know this, but I don't. Well, wait, he wait, certainly wait. Who didn't is it? do a man from Do we say it was River. Robert Miller? That was a different George, George Miller. Miller. Robert- there are two George Millers. Okay, one is a com- is a comic artist, isn't he? No. No, you're talking about Frank Miller. Oh, okay. All this time I thought we were talking about Frank Miller, and I was oh, like, no. no, he's terrible. No, no, Why no, do you no, think no, he no, would no. do a good job? If Frank Miller were directing this, oh. those women would have been called whore at least five or six <laughs> times in the first Yeah, and, that, and, the, and they would and have been, been told that they are, in fact, things. And yeah. the washing up scene in 34 would have probably been like a weird lesbian orgy And the orgy nipples of some would kind. have been way more prominent. Yeah. And that's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So unfortunately, we do not get any more of this fight. This is the end of the minute. Yeah, do we even see her week. catch the bolt cutter? Nope. I didn't we- think so. We just see it take air. It takes flight. But can we talk like really quick a little bit more about just like that moment of the women banding together and joining the fight? Like This is subverting a lot of expectations that I feel like most people in the audience at this point would have had of these characters of being fragile oh absolutely like, beautiful birds who have been caged forever who quivering. suddenly are yeah in oh any my. other in any other I'm action a quiver. movie in any other action movie like those kind of characters they stand by the sideline worrying about what's going to happen to them next because they're waiting to see what the two fighters are going to and gonna waiting do to be end. fridged frankly yeah like they're passive here they're taking action they're and they're deciding you know like they're not going to stand by and wait to find out what their destiny is going to be and inherit is the really really pregnant one Mm. And you don't often get to see pregnant women in action movies take a lead on any sort of course of action. Yeah, because, I mean, something that Julia said, what, last episode? Wednesday? Wednesday? That 
we sort of treat pregnant women as these things to be protected and coddled. They're vessels. Yeah, and, yeah. unless they want a seat on a train, then they can pretty much screw right off, apparently. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> that's not my opinion. That's just what I have. Yeah, I got a coworker who is. That's, yeah, I was going to say, that's observation. I'm usually the only one gentleman enough to stand up for a pregnant woman on the bus or the train. So I've that's... got a coworker who both times she's been pregnant, like she's got full California sarcasm. So she'll just stand up like, no, it's great. That's that's fine. I'll stand. And just, you know, very like, that's fine. Did I ever tell you about the time I asked somebody to move his like bag of liquor off of a bus seat and he like shamed me about it? And I was, he's like, where am I supposed to put it? I'm like, I don't care, bro. You can put it on my lap. I want that seat. <laughs> and then he was like, no, no, that's okay. And I was like, yeah, it is okay. Put it on the ground or hold on to it. See, the one time, the one time I have ever gotten the moxie up to ask someone to move their stuff, there was a child in the seat that I could not see. <gasps> oh, no. Get and that, I was like, on the get that crap car. out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> they were, the bus was full of people, and I saw a woman sitting on the outside seat, but I didn't see anyone in the inside seat. And I was like, you know what? Not today. <laughs> and I stumbled over, and I said, excuse me, can I sit there? And then this tiny child lifted its head from its mother's lap. It was, like, curled up in the fetal position. Oh. And she was like, oh, sure, sure, and went to get up. And I'm like, no, I'm a monster. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the scene? No, I ran away and tried to hide. <laughs> I felt so Got terrible. Off the next stop. Tactical retreat. <laughs> so terrible. I felt awful. Wow, Karen. Yeah. Have you done anything else lately to traumatize small children? Well, I did talk an awful lot off mic about how I'm pretty convinced that Rectus Erectus is wearing his children's, his brother's skulls around oh. his neck and maybe skinned their face for <laughs> no, mm, a crotch covering. Like but, you do. You know. We all have our ways of showing affection to our well, siblings. Welcome you know, to Craft Town. <laughs> it was like it was memorializing. It's leather work. That's the leather one oh one is like the first class at Craft Craft Town. It's upcycling. We're we're taxidermists. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Who wants everybody loves a little anthropodermic bibliopagy. I don't know what you're talking about. in tight. <laughs> Well, here at the end of whatever number week we're at, I think we're at week, week 12 or something like that, where would you like to point people to go to on the internet to find more of y'all? You should go to SoundCloud and look up A Star to Steer Her By, where you can hear me a lot of the time and Liz every once in a while. Sometimes. Talking about the Star Treks. We're never there together, though. Oh, except no, one that time. one time. We had one episode when we proved we were, in fact, two different people. Well, it's, it's funny because, like, when we were first doing Foxes in the Hen House, Liz and I were the two that, like, knew how to do the editing in the beginning. So it was like, I would legitimately listen and be like, wow, I didn't realize I sounded so smart this week. And I was like, oh, I didn't. That was Liz. <laughs> uh, but, like, it took, it even took, and I think you said that you had a similar, I mean, not like, how brilliant you know. is Caitlin? <laughs> Hers was more like the opposite. Like, geez, I remember saying that dumb crap. Oh, that was Caitlin. That's fine. Um, <laughs> but we legitimately, I think, again, I'm speaking for you as well, but I feel like we both legitimately had a little bit of trouble discerning our own voices from the other for a little you know, while. Because we were hearing people say, like, you guys sound really a lot alike and you need to say each other's names more often. I'm like, what are you talking about? I listen to them like, oh, which one is it? Oh, yeah. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> we do. Oh. But I love how no one confuses my voice for anyone else's. <laughs> That's true. You are very unique. Yeah, something like that. If you would like to read more of my... Did you like that? That was a great little segue I got there. I did like it. If you'd like to read more of my unique voice, if that's what we're calling it today, I can be found on Twitter at Older Than Latvia. And I'm also on the Twitters sometimes. I will try and get on there more. I'm at Hollywood Fat Cat. And as Caitlin mentioned, if you're interested in plumbing the depths of old internet, you can find the Foxes in the Hen House podcast with all sorts of old episodes that were uploaded a while ago. I don't even remember. It's anymore. only like two years. I was say, this, this podcast here didn't even exist two years ago. So stuff moves fast on the internet. It's true. As for us, we will be coming back after the weekend. Furiosa is going to get busy swinging those bolt cutters around. Max is going to show Furiosa the door. And Nux will finally join the party already in progress. The Mad Max Minute podcast is a fan project by Rick and Julia Ingham. The Mad Max franchise was created by George Miller and Byron Kennedy, is presented by Kennedy Miller Mitchell Productions, and distributed by Warner Brothers. Mad Max Minute is produced and edited by Rick Ingham. Our opening music is Verdi's Dies Irae by Daniel Bautista of DanielBautista.com. 
Our home on the internet is madmaxminute.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Mad Max Minute, like us on Facebook by searching for Mad Max Minute, and join our Facebook listener group, Mad Max Minute Beyond Microphone. If you'd like to support the podcast, visit madmaxminute.com, where you can see what's in our Tee Public store, join our Patreon, or even donate to the show to help us keep the tanks full. Thank you for joining us for Minute 36 of Fury Road. We'll see you next time. Thank you.